All right, <clears throat> so I'm back. I don't know uh, what happened there. My vid <clears throat> video just got cut off, but I was about to take a look at some of these homework problems um, involving torque and rotational inertia. So um, let's see, do I want to go back? <clears throat> mm, these, two, these two you can kind of do on your own as practice. Um, I'm actually just going to fly through all four of these pretty quickly. So, um, problem 1036, I'll wait here, okay, so uh, 1036, can you see that all right? Uh, grinding wheel is uniform cylinder with a radius 8.3 centimeters and a mass of given. So I'm not even going to plug, plug in these numbers, this is sort of just a guide. You plug in the numbers, you do the calculation, you get what you get. So, <clears throat> rotational inertia of a cylinder uh, rotated around its center like a wheel. Okay, this is a grinding wheel, so it's being rotated like a wheel. Uh, again, as opposed to what? As opposed to being uh, turned like a coin on a table, like spun like a coin on a table. That would be the other way you could, one other way you could rotate a cylinder. So, not like that. Um, the ro rotational inertia of the <coughs> uh, this grinding wheel around the cylinder, one half of times mass times the radius squared. Calculate the applied torque needed to accelerate it uh, from rest to 1800 RPMs in eight seconds. If it's known to slow down from 1250 RPMs to rest in 58 seconds. What's, what's this all about? Um, so this is frictional torque. Frictional torque slows it down uh, you want to apply torque uh, to speed it up, okay? So um, the net torque, just like the net force, is equal to the rotational inertia of the object times the rotational, the net rotational acceleration, okay? But net torque is equal to applied torque minus frictional torque because, of course, frictional torque is acting against you, right? So, <clears throat> so when you know what frictional torque is, frictional torque, of course, is the rotational inertia times the uh, rotational acceleration due to friction. Okay, you see that all right? So given that it slows down from 1250 RPMs to rest in 58 seconds, acceleration due to friction is 1250 RPMs, we got to convert that to radians per second in 58 seconds. Okay, so times, um, <clears throat> let's see, 2 pi radians per revolution, revolutions per minute, uh, right, radians per revolution divided by 60 um, minutes, seconds per minute. Okay, it's on the bottom, so when it comes up top, uh, you do the calculation, you get what you get, but that's how you calculate the acceleration due to friction, rotational acceleration due to friction. Uh, and then that goes there, you get the torque due to friction, okay? Uh, <clears throat> the net torque is going to be rotation inertia of the cylinder times. Uh, same kind of thing. We want to accelerate it from uh, rest to 1800. So again, technically that's a negative. Like our final was zero and our initial was 1250. So yeah, it's a negative, negative torque. That's where that negative sign comes from ultimately. But um, the acceleration, the net acceleration is uh, 1800 RPMs in eight seconds times my conversion factor of two pi divided by 60. Okay, so um, I'm gonna zoom this in so you can see it. I always try to do that so you don't have to squint at this window. Um, there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> the rotational inertia formula, that will be given. You don't need to memorize that formula. Uh, you do need to remember torque equals rotational inertia times rotational acceleration because that's 
perfectly analogous to force equals mass times acceleration. Um, you do need to know that, of course, net torque is just the sum of the, the torques being applied. Um, <clears throat> the two torques being applied is the applied torque and the frictional torque in the opposite direction. Okay. Um, so finding out what, every, what, each friction, what each torque is, the frictional or the, the net, just in, involves rotational inertia times rotational acceleration. Again, it's perfectly analogous to force equals mass times acceleration. All right, as well as net force equals the sum of the forces. So there you go, that's that one. Um, what do we got next? Merry-go-round accelerates from rest to 0.7 radians per second in 20 seconds. Assuming the merry-go-round is a uniform disk of mass 7.2 meters. <coughs> okay. Uh, again, so this one is 1041. Assuming that uh, the merry-go-round is a uniform disk uh, of mass given, radius given, calculate the neck torque required to accelerate it. Okay. So again, same exact thing. Uh, net torque is I times the cylinder of the cylinder times the acceleration. Okay. Acceleration is change in rotational velocity divided by time. Okay. Uh, I of the cylinder is one half mass of the cylinder times R squared because again it's being rotated um, like a wheel. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Again, zoom in so you can see. Okay, um, looks like we got everything there. Alright. Next problem. Uh, so I'm actually, I think I'm going to do just one of these because they're similar. Uh, one of these three. The helicopter blades, same type of one. Definitely practice the helicopter blade one because I like that one. But it's, it's exactly the same one as the merry-go-round helicopter blade. Um, let me pull up. Okay. Uh, see this down here, long uniform rod? They just give you the formula. That's what a helicopter blade is is modeled after. It's like it's just modeled by thinking of it as a long uniform rod. Uh, the rotational inertia of that thing when rotated around its end, like the helicopter blades are, is one third mass times the length squared. So, um, all right. So this is the this is the big one. You really need to to learn to know what this is like. Okay, uh, Atwood's machine, but the grown-up version. Okay, well, not fully grown-up because we're not looking at rotational. Uh, we're not applying rotational friction here. Um, but Atwood's machine, with looking at the pulley. Right. Remember last time we looked at the Atwood machine, we neglected the pulley. So we're not going to neglect the pulley this time. This is 1051. Okay, you've got pulley, mass A, mass B, mass pulley, okay. Um, wait a second, there's a lot of space that I'm not using. There we go, okay. Um, it's kind of weird. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we want the acceleration of the masses A and B. Okay, uh, we've got the radius, the radius of the pulley is R, this is mass of the pulley. Okay, so um, this, again, folks, pay attention to this derivation, pay attention, this is probably one of the most important things to study for this unit. We're doing a crash course through uh, the unit. Of course, uh, that's just what we got to do. I'm going to put this right here. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're doing a crash course through the unit. 
this is the problem. If you're prioritizing your time, you really want to study this problem. Um, some form or other is, you know, guaranteed to be on the test. So this is the combination of what we've, the reason why is because it's a combination of what we've learned so far. It's a combination of linear dynamics with the new stuff, uh, rotational dynamics. So, um, so pay attention. Um, and uh, definitely email me if you have any questions, uh, but you can stop the video and just go back and, you know, try to figure things out. Okay, so uh, to analyze this system using forces and torques, we start drawing the forces on uh, FGA. So in fact, I'm just going to write, we start drawing the forces on each object, MAG and MBG. Like I said, can you see that in red? Um, like I said, this is a combination of linear dynamics and rotational dynamics, okay? Uh, the upward force is TA, the upward force here is TB. Now, back when we were uh, doing this, the little kitty version, we ignored the pulley, we ignored everything about the pulley, the mass of the pulley, the inertia of the pulley, um, the fact that it takes a force to get the tur pulley turning. So, now that we're not ignoring this, we realize, okay, t tension A can't be equal to tension B. If they were the same, like we assumed, then the net torque on this pulley would be zero and it wouldn't turn, no matter what the masses were, right? We assumed that the tension was the same, no matter what the masses were, but that can't be the case because net torque on the pulley uh, cannot be zero because it's a thing that has inertia. It requires a net torque to turn. Now, you know, when we idealize it as not having any mass or inertia, then of course the net torque would be zero uh, for turning something that doesn't have inertia. Okay, so this is real life. Pulleys actually have inertia. Um, so that's why these two tensions are different. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> these mass A is connected to the pulley on the left side, so if the pulley pulls up on mass A, then mass A pulls down with an equal and opposite force, TA. Same thing over here. If the pulley pulls up on mass B with TB, then mass B pulls back with an equal and opposite force. Okay, so we've got the forces drawn on the pulley as well. Okay, I'm going to make sure, just stop and make sure that you can actually see that. Okay. Um, again, we can, so, make this big. I'm probably going to just leave this big. Okay. Um, all right. So, next step. <clears throat> uh, we apply linear dynamics to mass A and mass B and we apply rotational dynamics to the pulley and we pull them all together and that's how we're going to find our acceleration, okay? So, linear dynamics to mass A and mass B, it's just sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration, Newton's law. TA, this should feel familiar, okay? Mass A times acceleration of A. T for B, TB minus mass B of G equals mass B times acceleration of B. And for the pulley, uh, some of the torques, okay, the rotational version of Newton's second law is, uh, this is sum of the forces equals mass and acceleration. Sum of the torques equals rotational inertia of the pulley times rotational acceleration of the pulley. Okay, what are the sum of the torques? Well, we've got uh, TA, that force acting at a lever arm of R, okay, uh, as you can see, in the conventional, the choice or conventional choice is counterclockwise is positive, minus TB times R equals, I'm just going to go ahead and write in the formula for a cylinder, but if it's not a cylinder, if it's a wheel or something else, you use the formula, right, for the rotational inertia of that thing, whatever it is, okay, but it's a cylinder for this case, so one half MP R squared times the acceleration of the pulley. All right, um, 
So that's pretty much the physics. We have a couple, one more thing to do, well, a couple connections to make, but uh, the physics of this problem is almost done. Okay, we know that uh, the acceleration of A is the opposite, equal and opposite acceleration of B. Okay, we know that. Check. But we also know that there's an, a, a connection between how fast uh, mass B falls, assuming mass B is heavier than mass A. Um, there's a connection between how fast mass B falls and how fast the pulley turns. What's that connection? It's acceleration of B equals um, radius times acceleration of the pulley. Okay, I left a space there because I'm going to put a negative sign. Why? Well, if acceleration of B, um, let's say, well, actually, we can do this. Acceleration of B, uh, all, these, all these things, all of our uh, axis system choices are upper is positive, and then um, counterclockwise is positive. Okay? So, uh, if the acceleration of B is negative, okay, uh, that means down, then the rotational acceleration is negative as well. So these actually have the same sign. If the acceleration of A is positive, uh, sorry, the acceleration of B, if B goes up, then the system will turn in the positive direction. So we've got that connection as well, okay? So we have these three equations. In fact, we have five equations. Uh, that's fortunate because we have five unknowns, right? Three acceleration, unknowns acceleration, two unknown tensions, that's five unknowns. But we have five equations, five linearly independent equations. So this is just algebra after this. The physics is done. Um, if you want to solve for the particular acceleration of one of these, uh, it's just algebra, okay? Do some substitution. So, um, tell you what, I think what I'll do, I'll squeeze in the algebra over here, but uh, again, you need to practice it. You need to probably just stop the video here, uh, work out the algebra, um, and then start it up and see if you got, got it right um, by comparing what you have to me. So, I'm gonna just write down a couple formulas here. I'm gonna take uh, TA minus MAG. I'm going to uh, solve everything in terms of uh, acceleration of A. Okay, that's the, my chosen acceleration. Um, okay, I'm going to write this below. TB minus MBG equals negative MB times the acceleration of A because AB and AA have opposite signs. Okay, and then I have, I'm going to simplify this by dividing through by R. TA minus TB is one half mass of pulley times just a single R because I divided through by R. Um, and then I'm going to use the fact that um, <coughs> alpha pulley is AB divided by R, which is negative acceleration of A divided by R. Okay? Um, so alpha, um, alpha pulley becomes negative acceleration of A divided by R. Those R's cancel. Okay, so um, these three equations I can combine. Uh, if I just write, solve this one for TA, solve this one for TB, and plug those in for here, I'm going to just do the, all those in one step. So I have MAG plus MA acceleration of A minus, okay, MBG minus MB acceleration of A, because this goes, that becomes positive, TB is that, and then I have minus it again, and then the one half, still have one half MP times a negative acceleration of A. Okay, am I fitting that out? Good. So collecting the acceleration of A terms on one side, I've got a mass A, I've got a positive mass B, and then I bring around, I've got one half mass P equals the other terms. This is going to be MBG minus MAG, okay? <clears throat> so 
uh, if I just divide through by this, then that parentheses can go away on the left-hand side. And I've got my answer for the acceleration of A. Okay, so uh, that's the algebra. <clears throat> of course, you know, I, I kind of did it a little bit fast. Um, Give me a few steps, so you want to you want to check that. But um, if we go back to the problem, hold on, let me minimize, minimize, minimize. All right. Okay, so. Uh, when they say compare the situation in which the moment of the pulley is ignored. Uh, notice if we ignore that, uh, we get this formula without the one half p in the bottom, okay? So the one half p in the bottom is the only difference between our idealized version and the sort of, you know, teenage version. The full adult version is obviously with a rotational friction, but um, as you might expect, conceptually, the difference is, and that's something that you want to keep in mind, conceptually, the difference is, put this up here, the difference is, um, if you, obviously, if you take into account the rotational inertia of the pulley, uh, then the system as a whole has more inertia. And that greater inertia, which is greater resistance to acceleration, uh, ends up on the denominator, increasing the denominator, and um, you accelerate less quickly okay but the net forces on the system don't change just because on the system as a whole don't change just because you're uh, t considering rotational inertia and torques because those torques are internal to the system okay um, so don't get confused by that but there you go so uh, this was part two I'm going to stop the video now uh, this was part two of the second lecture <laughs> because it got cut off. Um, so this is just ending the second lecture of chapter 10. We're skipping rotational, uh, the calculation of rotational inertia, is which is called moments of inertia, uh, just traditionally. Um, and we're going to energy. So we're gonna finish up chapter 10 with energy uh, in the next video.